Praise be the nurses and doctors, every medical staff bent over flesh to offer care, for lives saved and lives lost, for showing up either way. Praise for the farmers tilling soil, planting seeds so food can grow, an act of hope if ever there was. Praise be the janitors and garbage collectors, the grocery store clerks and the truck drivers barreling through long, quiet nights. Give thanks for bus drivers, delivery persons, postal workers, and all those keeping an eye on water, gas, and electricity. Blessings on our leaders making hard choices for the common good, offering words of assurance. Celebrate the scientists working a way to understand the thing that plagues us to find an antidote, and all the medicine makers. Praise be the journalists keeping us informed. Praise be the teachers, finding new ways to educate children from afar, and blessings on parents holding it together for them. Blessed are the elderly and those with weakened immune systems, all those who worry for their health, praise for those who stay at home to protect them. Blessed are the domestic violence victims on lockdown with abusers, the homeless, and refugees. Praise for the artists and poets, the singers and storytellers, all those who nourish with words and sound and color. Blessed are the ministers and therapists of every kind, bringing words of comfort. Blessed are the ones whose jobs are lost, who have no savings, who feel fear of the unknown nine. Blessed are those in grief, especially who mourn alone. Blessed are those who have passed into the great night. Praise for police and firefighters, paramedics, and all who work to keep us safe. Praise for all the workers and caregivers of every kind. Praise for the sound of notifications, messages from friends reaching across the distance. Give thanks for laughter and kindness. Praise be our four-footed companions with no forethought or anxiety, responding only in love. Praise for the seas and rivers, forests and stones who teach us to endure. Give thanks for your ancestors, for the wars and plagues they endured and survived. Their resilience is in your bones and your blood. Blessed is the water that flows over our hands and the soap that helps keep them clean each time a baptism. Praise every moment of stillness and silence so new voices can be heard. Praise the chance at slowness. Praise be the birds who continue to sing the sky awake each day. Praise for the primrose poking yellow petals from dark earth. Blessed is the air clearing overhead so one day we can breathe deeply again. And when this has passed, may we say that love spread more quickly than any virus ever could. May we say this was not just an ending, but also a place to begin. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship. We are St. Paul United Church of Christ coming to you online from my home in Buffalo Grove. It is a glorious day outside. The temperature's a little chilly, but we are warm in the spirit and connected in heart together today. I do want to start with a few announcements as we begin worship. The first one being that if you are signed on with us on live, if you share our live feed with your family and friends right now on their timelines, you can be in worship with them too. And then also I want to um, 
ask you to please comment during worship. Make sure that you're sending those emojis and stuff that uplift everyone else. Say hello to your brothers and sisters online with you today and keep commenting during the worship service. If we crash during the worship service, don't worry about that. We'll come back online just as soon as we can, so please just hang with us. I want to give you an update on the food pantry. Last week we announced that we were going to have a, a money collection for our food pantries. And in the interim we have found out that there is one food pantry that can use the money more than they can use the food. There is one food pantry that is in desperate need of gift certificates, gift cards to go to Jewel, and then there is one food pantry that does need the items more so than the money. So to date, we have collected over $3,100 to be able to help the area food pantries. Go team, fantastic, I love that, that's such a great number. And we donated $1,000 to the Fish Food Pantry in Carpentersville this week. They have great buying power because they're a large system and they can get a lot more money for a dollar than we could at the grocery stores. So we gave them $1,000 and they're doing their shopping. We're going to get gift cards to give to the Cuba Township Pantry that helps the area around Barrington. And on Tuesday and Thursday of this week, from 10 a.m. to noon, we're going to be in Fellowship Hall, Jenny Nock and I, with masks and gloves on. And you can drop by and bring any items for a food pantry that you want to bring, and we'll make sure that that gets to the Palatine Food Pantry that's more in need of items than they are money or gift cards. They are especially in need of diapers. And I think that you could probably bring any size of diaper, but they specially need five and six, sizes five and six. So if you could bring those, drop those off at church on uh, Tuesday morning and Thursday morning between 10 a.m. and noon in Fellowship Hall, that would be fantastic. We ask you to please practice all of the safety guidelines for social distancing. Please wear a mask, please wear gloves as you come into the building to drop things off. And we would really appreciate any donations that you can bring to us. We're gonna try something new today. Someone mentioned to me a couple weeks ago that one of the things they were really missing was having coffee fellowship time with everybody after worship was over. So today at 11 o'clock, I am going to open up our Zoom room that we have through our Zoom system. And anybody who wants to drop by and have coffee fellowship with others in the church or folks that follow us online, you're welcome to join us. You have received the invitation in your email. You will not be allowed in the room until I identify you as someone who has been invited. But once we get there, if we start to get a, quite a few people that join in for the Coffee Fellowship this morning, I'm going to break us out into break off rooms so that there can be smaller groups of people to facilitate good conversation. Bring whatever your favorite drink is, bring your snack that you want to have for the morning, and I hope to see you at 11 a.m. in Zoom. You might want to check your spam folder on your email because someone found it in their spam folder this morning. But please check your email after worship is over and join us for a Zoom virtual coffee fellowship. You'll notice this week that there might be communion dropped off on your doorstep if we have your address to be able to drop communion off to you. So please know that that has been packaged in a very safe way with gloves on. Folks have touched that. They'll be delivering it with gloves and masks on. And so we'll take communion together next Sunday. Next Sunday we will be in worship together online again as we have been for the last seven or so weeks. We expect that we're going to have another five weeks of this because of Governor Pritzker shutting down the, the um, stay in place rules or bringing about the stay in place rules um, through the end of May and there are five Sundays in May. So after today we're expecting we'll have five more worships online at least. So bear with us. We're so thankful that you are here with us. We're so glad that you're here worshiping with us today and in spirit together. Thank you. Thank you for being here with us. Next week our passing of the peace pictures will be your team colors, your favorite team colors that you want to wear. Send me your pictures all this week of yourself in your team colors. As you can see, I'm wearing one of my very favorite t-shirts today. It says, love yourself first. Today is t-shirt day for passing of the peace, and I think you're really going to like the passing of the peace video for this morning. But let us be about what we're truly in worship for today, which is the worship of our wonderful, awesome God. We're going to begin this morning with a prelude brought to us by Renee Kruper, our music minister. Enjoy.
Would you all please join me in the call to celebrate? Siblings in Christ, although the shouts of He is risen have quieted, we know that Easter is still upon us and new life is still occurring all around. Sometimes it is hard to see new life in a world where it seems that chaos and darkness have the upper hand. Sometimes it is even difficult to see new life beginning in ourselves. Yet we know the promise of the resurrection is this. God is always present, transforming us and helping us to live as lights in the midst of any darkness. Would you please join in singing our opening song this, this morning, which is, O oh God in Raising Jesus. Let's sing together. Brothers and sisters, would you please join me in the communal prayer of invocation. Holy One, thank you for these moments of worship which offer us opportunities to receive new life from you. Help us to worship with you with a renewed sense of joy and commitment, open to the movement of your spirit in us and among us. Fill us with courage and strength so that we can leave here and willingly share the new life found in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we come to our time of passing of the peace, as I have said, if you are worshiping this morning with family with you in your homes, please wish one another the peace of Christ. And if you are by yourself today, know that you are not alone because Christ is beside you. And reach out and hug yourself and say to yourself, peace of Christ is in me. We do have a special video this morning. Folks sent us t-shirts of their favorite inspirational t-shirts or just their favorite t-shirts that they wear every day that makes them feel good. It's backed by a special track called Friends Forever. So I hope you enjoy this video time of Passing of the Peace.
Let's join in singing together our response to passing of the peace, let there be peace on earth. kids if you're worshiping today with your family come closer to the computers or the iPads or the tablets or the phones because I want to talk just to you guys for a little bit this is our time for all God's children but of course we don't exclude big kids of God who want to hear the story this day we are going to be talking about stories as the older folks worship together and you know I know some stories of some of your lives for example I know that Miss Violet was born where she was born on a special birthday that she shares with Miss Lori. And I also know that Miss Violet and Miss Hattie share a name together. They both have the same name in their full name. I know that Zach was the first baby that I baptized at St. Paul United Church of Christ. I know that Fred likes to play Wizards, World of Wizards on his phone. I know that Buddy shares the name that I used to call my son when he was a little boy. I used to call him Buddy. And I know that Bryce shares the name with my son Bryce. So you see, I know some of the stories of all of you. I know Layla likes to do pottery like I do. And I know that Jace loves to play like I used to play when I was a little kid. So there are lots of stories that you have in this world. What I'd like you to do this week, if you could, if you wanna take the time, I want you to write me a letter and tell me a story about yourself. That's sort of the way that I get to know you better and the way you get to tell the world who you are. You see, part of what we do as people in the world is tell the story of who we are. We tell other people how our life is going and that's an example to other folks. You know, when I was a kid, I used to tell the story of how I loved to read. I would tell anybody who would listen to me, I love to read, do you love to read? And I would ask them all of the books that they were reading. Sometimes I would ask them the books they were reading just because I wanted the names of new books to read. But telling our stories is so important because it helps all of us get to know one another. So maybe your parents would help you write me a story about who you are this week and they can send it to me in the mail they can send it to church or they can send it to my house both of those addresses are in our directories and everybody has those but I want to hear a story about your life tell me something I might not know like your favorite food or your favorite color or your favorite flower or your favorite game to play send me a story about who you are I also wanted to let you know that you got a packet in the mail this week, I hope, from Miss Jan, and she sent you our Sunday School lesson for this week, and you've got lots of stuff to do in there. But you also have a little craft to do that kind of goes along with what we were doing last week, talking about the story of Doubting Thomas. That's a great story, by the way. You might want to have your parents read you that one. And what you do is you take these two pieces of paper that she sent you and you create this. The instructions are in your Sunday school packet for this week and I hope that maybe you'll send me a picture of what your hands and heart look like when you get done with that. 
I hope that you are well. I know that this is a strange time and I know how hard this distance learning is, but I know that you can do it because I know the story of who you are. You are strong kids. I know all of you coming to worship with us, you are strong kids and you can do this. I know that, you can do this. So I have, hope you have a great week and I hope to see you soon. Bye everybody. Hey everyone, let's join together in our song that we sing as the kids go to Sunday school. Friends, we have a special piece of special music today. Larry Breidenbach is uh, providing that for us today. It's a special song that I kept hearing in my head him singing it for the last couple weeks, and so he indulged me and he's singing it for us this morning. It's called, He Knows My Name. We've come now to the time in our worship service when it is our time to pray together. This is where we share our joys and our concerns, our thoughts, our hopes, our dreams, those transformations that we may have witnessed during the week. I have a few that I want to lift up to you before we begin to pray that I received this week. The first one is, is that last week we prayed for Connie and Nick's uh, daughter Cindy as she was going into her surgery this week. She did have surgery, it went well, and she is recovering well, and the family is doing well. Connie and Nick are so thankful for our prayers for Cindy, and also they're thankful for the folks who are helping the family during this time when Cindy is recovering. We want to lift up Chloe, who is experiencing some health issues right now. We want to lift up Dolores, who is one of Pete Ducharme's workers. She was diagnosed with COVID-19 this week. 
And we want to lift up Juan, who is the husband of one of Pete's workers. Juan um, was misdiagnosed with uh, an ailment in his respiratory system, and a few weeks afterwards, he found out that it was COVID-19. Juan is recovering, but he still needs our thoughts and prayers, and I hope that you'll lift him up in this time. We want to lift up Howard and Natalie's daughter, who's expecting a granddaughter soon in June, and lift them up. The, his daughter, the granddaughter, Isaac, his grandson, and also the son that is waiting to have this baby born. We want to lift up the families of Joe Rawlings, who was 40 years old, again a family friend of the um, Ducharmes who passed away from COVID-19 this week. We want to lift up um, Arlene, who was diagnosed with COVID. She is an older lady living in a care facility, and so we pray for Arlene's safety and recovery. We want to lift up those who are in care facilities and can't be with their families during this time, especially thinking of our dear Shirley and Dee and Hank. Please lift them up. We want to lift up the Cottingham family in Tennessee who lost their home to the tornadoes that went through there a week or so ago. Please keep keep them in your prayers and we also want to lift up our retail workers who have not been able to come home on furlough yet those who are in grocery stores especially and stores like the big box stores they are working round the clock sometimes taking very little breaks I especially want to lift up my friend Robin who is working anywhere from 10 to 15 hours a day at Jewel making sure that we all have our essential foods in our houses so those are the ones that I received this week and I hope that you will lift up and hold in your hearts the intentions that you have this week as we pray together. The Holy Spirit will pray those out to God for you. But let us be in a time of prayer. Holy One, our prayers this morning are simply to be your vessels in this world to bear your grace and love into all of the places that we can. We ask that you continue to mold us and shape us, and yet we know that this is not a simple prayer that we lift up to you, because it is one that requires that we surrender our need to be in charge and to accept that which you shape us into, to accept the mantle of living as you direct. Open us up to your leading, Lord. Let us follow you and follow the path that you have set for us. Lord, we have much to be thankful for this day, for our families, our friends, and our homes. Especially this day, we are thankful that Cindy's surgery went well and she is recovering. We're thankful for the people who are surrounding the family with such grace and love, helping them through this time. We're thankful for all of the money that has been donated to our food pantry collection and thankful for the ability to continue to serve our neighbors as they, their need is growing in this world. We pray for strength and healing for Chloe and for Dolores and for Juan. And we pray, Lord, for everyone that has been diagnosed with COVID-19, that you would continue to help them recover and heal well. We lift up Howard and Natalie's granddaughter who's about to be born in June and we pray such blessings on the whole family at this time. We lift up Arlene who has been diagnosed with COVID-19. She is an older Lord and we pray that you would continue to surround her with grace and peace and healing at this time. We lift up the family of Joe Rawlings who lost his battle with COVID this week and we pray that your comfort would be around their family. We pray for all of those in our world who are hurting, those who are struggling with hunger and without shelter, those who are experiencing life as a continual daily struggle. We pray for the children who are worried and anxious, afraid and lonely. We pray for the courage to act for you in this world, Lord, to help eradicate all of the worry and anxiety as much as we can in this time of social distancing. Lord, today we are thinking of the Cottingham family who lost their home in the tornadoes in Tennessee, and we pray that they are receiving the aid that they so desperately need. 
We're thinking of our retail workers, Lord, who have not had a break in the midst of this pandemic, all of the hours that they're putting in to help us. We pray that they would get some rest in the middle of this time. We pray for those who are in care facilities or who are in their homes alone and can't be with their families right now. We're especially thinking of Shirley and Hank and Dee. And we pray, Lord, that all of the workers there are surrounding them with all of the love that we want to give them. We pray, Lord, for our world and its leaders. We know that going through this time of pandemic is such a frightening time. And we know that our leaders are having to make tough decisions to help keep us safe. Remind us, Lord, that the decisions that they make are for the greater good. And we ask, Lord, that you help them to set aside any agenda they might have for their own aggrandizement and help them to follow you into health and wholeness with us. We pray to be peacemakers wherever we can go, Lord, and we pray always to speak truth to power, speak your words, your story into this world. And Lord, we do have those intentions on our hearts that we're not able to lift up. So we spend these next few moments in silence with you, letting the Holy Spirit pray those things out for us. Lord, you do know our names. You know our every thoughts. And you help us, Lord, in all of the situations in our lives. We pray that in your mercy you would hear our prayers. Send your spirit to move among us, showing us how to live more faithfully as your disciples. Help us each day to be more like Jesus, the one who opened the doors of your kingdom so that all would know your grace and love. Hear us now as we pray together the prayer he teaches us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us join together in singing our prayer response at this time. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from Lynn Minton, and I think that you'll recognize where her video segment was recorded this week. Today's reading comes from Luke chapter 24, verses 13 through 35. Listen to the word of the Lord. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all the things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, what things? And they replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who is a prophet mighty in, the, in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who had said that he was alive. 
Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were open, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Would you all pray with me for just a moment, please? Holy One, we are thankful for this word that comes to us today in this ancient story about Jesus meeting us where we are. We pray that as we go into this time of learning that the Holy Spirit would move among us and use the words of this story to help us be different when our worship ends. I pray, Lord, that I would get out of your way and simply be the vessel through which you speak this day. Let it be your word that is heard here. And I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts and minds would be acceptable to you who is our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So I want to tell you a story this morning about a woman I used to know. Her name was Evelyn. She was a member of one of the churches that I have served. And Evelyn, I believe, lived to be 99 years old. I know it's somewhere between 96 and 99, but I think it was 99. Evelyn was one of those ladies that whenever you were around her, you felt like you were being pastored. Evelyn became homebound and she was only able to stay in her home, but every single week she wanted me to bring the prayer requests to her so that she could write cards to the folks of the church who were on the prayer list, letting them know that somebody was praying for them, because I can guarantee you, Evelyn was praying for them. And so, you know, I got to know Evelyn a little bit by going over and sitting and having a coffee or something with her. She always had a Coca-Cola for me because I don't drink coffee. And I got to know her a little bit. But I also knew the story of Evelyn's life from her daughter that I knew very well. And you know, the funny thing is, is that every time that I would sit with Evelyn and chat for a little while, spend a little time being pastored as I was supposed to be pastoring, I would ask Evelyn the stories of her life and she would never tell me the stories that her daughter told me. The stories of how she had survived breast cancer, the stories of how she had tragically lost her husband, the stories of how she had become homebound. All of those stories that she had in her life, I knew them from her daughter, but Evelyn never shared those stories. Whenever I would ask her to tell me what her life had been like, whenever I would say to her, Evelyn, so tell me some stuff about yourself, she would begin to tell me the stories of good things, about the birth of her children, about her grandchildren and her great-grandchildren, about the person who stopped by the day before and had coffee and cake with her, about all of these wonderful things. And one day I said to her, Evelyn, please tell me about some of the other things that happened in your life. I know from your daughter some of those things. I want to hear it from you. And she looked at me and she said, why? Why do you want to know those things? They're just a part of life. And I said, but Evelyn, aren't they the fullness of your story? And she said, oh no, oh no. They are just part 
of my story. You know, one chapter doesn't mean that your whole life is the same story. She says, the fullness of my life is the story I tell about the goodness of God in my life. I learned a great lesson that day. I learned a great lesson about how the stories we tell about our life are how we are called to tell about the grace of God in our lives. Now I'm sure that many of us, myself included, many of us have spent an awful lot of time in our life reciting all of the bad things that have happened to us. And while there are those times when knowing what another person has gone through is really important because it helps us to grow, what we do know is, is that the more we spend our time in those past stories where bad things have happened, the less we're able to see Christ in our midst. That's why I wanted to preach about the Emmaus story today. There is so much to preach about the Emmaus story. So much stuff. But as I read it again this week, what struck me was that as the two disciples were on their way to Emmaus, they were talking back and forth about what had just occurred about Jesus' crucifixion and how they knew a little bit about this story flying around about his resurrection. But they were focusing in on, have you not known what happened? And all of a sudden they have a traveling companion. And the traveling companion says to them, what is it that's going on with you right now? And they begin to recite the story of the bad things that had just happened in their lives. The bad things that their master and teacher had been put to death by the Romans on a cross. And they themselves were getting out of Dodge. They were leaving town. They were out the door. They didn't want to be there anymore. And they said to the traveling companion that they encountered, Don't you know? Don't you know how bad it is right now? Our leader was put to death. Don't you know all the bad things that have transpired in the last few days? You see, they were reciting that story of all the bad stuff. They were reciting how much anxiety and worry and fear that they had to this traveling companion that came up upon them. There's a lot of that going on right now, isn't there? There's a lot of reciting of the story of what's happening to us in the midst of this pandemic that is focusing on all of the bad things. We can't do what we want to do. We have to wear these masks in public. We can't be in church together. We can't go to the stores that we want to go to. We can't go out to the restaurants. Oh my gosh, this is so horrible. Oh my gosh, this is what's happening to us. Oh my gosh. In the midst of those kinds of stories, we're forgetting that the traveling companion that we have with us right now is Jesus. Jesus is traveling along with us, and Jesus is walking with us. But we're busy reciting that story of how this horrible time is happening to us, and we're telling that to our traveling companion. We're reciting it. Some might even say we're regurgitating it over and over and over again about how bad this time is. That happens to us a lot, I think. Now, I want to make it perfectly clear that I do not believe there is any shame in being victimized sometime in your life. That has happened to all of us at some point in our life. All of us have experienced a time when we felt like a victim and we need to get that story out of us because of the fact that that helps us heal. But there are times when we prefer to be in that victim story and stay there in the pain rather than moving forward. You know, it occurs to me that in this Emmaus story that the disciples change their story once they realize that Christ is in their midst. Christ goes along with them and he stays with them and he has a meal with them and he breaks the bread and in the midst of the sacrament, breaking the bread, that thing that they may have experienced with him beforehand, where he broke the bread and said, in this is the power, the power of resurrection. In the midst of that, 
they realize that Christ is with them. They realize that the risen one is there, that the resurrection has occurred, and that it continues to occur. And you know what? Their story changes. They start racing back to Jerusalem, and their story has changed. They race back to tell the other disciples, we have seen him. We have seen the risen one. Isn't this fantastic? And they begin to tell the story of how they encountered Christ in their midst. It occurs to me that when we encounter Christ in our midst, our story changes. And if it doesn't, you know, that's a spiritual place that we need to work on inside of ourselves. If we know the power of Christ in our lives, if we recognize Christ in our lives, if we realize that Christ is with us in our lives and we still prefer to stay in that old story of pain and anguish and harm, that's a spiritual place in us that we need to be working on because we're not realizing that Christ is there to help us change our story. Christ is there to show us what the glory of God is in our lives. Christ is there to help us be like Evelyn, to look at all of the things that may have happened to us, but to make that faith decision, that faith choice, to move forward and say, I know that happened to me, but guess what the glory of God is in my life? The glory of God is, is that I am here and able to proclaim that Christ is helping us in every situation around us. I'm not sure today when we're going to stop telling these bad stories about COVID happening around us. But what I'd like us to do is I'd like us to focus upon the stories of hope that are in the midst of all of this bad stuff that's going on. That's one of the reasons why we played the, the uh, video for you this morning called The Prayer for a Pandemic. Because in the midst of that, the person who wrote that song and is lifting it up in voice is telling us what the hope is around us. The hope is the doctors and nurses and the retail workers and those who are ministering to one another and those who are helping keep our essential services going. The hope among us is the children. The hope among us are our four-legged furry friends that are bringing us love unconditionally. The hope is, is that we are working together in ways that are so different than we were before COVID hit. We're working together to bring about a change in our world. And we hope that this is not an ending. We hope it is a beginning. So our hard question this week is, what kind of stories are we telling? Are we telling those stories of pain and anguish and still so attached to them that it's the only story that we can tell? Or are we telling the story of our life in such a way that we share what has occurred and yet also offering that how that occurred in our life has brought us hope and love and grace? If we truly want to be the people of God in this world, isn't it incumbent upon us to begin telling how the things we go through in our lives bring hope and grace and joy and love and compassion into this world? It's a tough question to confront ourselves about whether or not we're living in that story of pain or if we're using that story of pain to help others, if we're using it to proclaim that Christ is among us and helped us through that. What's the story that you are telling in your life right now? Is it about the glory of God or is it about all of those things? that hurt you? That's a tough question. And I hope that you'll ask yourself that this week and begin to tell the story of hope and grace and love. The hope and grace and love that Christ is showing you is right in front of you. Have a great week. Amen. I want to tell you a story right now. The story is, is that your generosity is overflowing. Even in the midst of all of this time when we can't physically be in the building together, everyone is so vested in St. Paul 
that they are continuing to support us financially generously. And I am so thankful for that. Those financial um, offerings that you're sending in every week, we're getting them in the mail every week. We're finding them through the door slot, the mail slot at church when we go in to do some office work. All of those financial offerings that you're sending to us not only are helping us right now to do the things that we need to do, but they are making sure that we have a St. Paul in the future. I know that it's tough to not be together in the midst of the building. That's one of the things that is hard, a hard story for us to tell right now. But the glory story that's in the midst of that is, is that we are all vested in the fact that we're still a congregation together and we're doing everything we can to possibly lift up all of these beautiful ways to help one another. One of them is the financial giving that you've been so generous with. And again, I thank you for that. Let's sing our doxology together, and then after the doxology, we'll pray over our offerings. Would you please join me in the communal dedication of the offerings? Giving one, thank you for the blessings we receive from your love and grace. We return to you these portions of our blessings, and we pray that you will receive them and increase them so our work for your purposes in this world can grow. Help us to be more generous in our giving each day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. One time when I met with Evelyn, we were singing some hymns together, and one of the hymns that she wanted to hear was the song that we're going to sing next, I Love to Tell the Story. So I invite you to join in singing our closing hymn this morning, which is, I Love to Tell the Story.
hope you enjoyed that closing hymn as much as I do. That's one of my favorite hymns about telling the story of Jesus' goodness and love in this world. Thank you for being with us in worship today, and I hope that you will join us in about a half an hour for our 11 a.m. virtual coffee fellowship. Remember to check your email for the Zoom link, and I will let you in just as soon as I recognize you in the waiting room. Please stay for a little bit longer to hear a beautiful postlude played by our music minister, Renee Kruper. It's called, I Stand Amazed. Bye, and I'll see you soon in the Zoom Coffee Fellowship. Thank you.